I'm Andrew. I'm Melissa. This is 12, 12 Days, Days of Vlogmas. Vlogmas. Now on to the video. Cheers. This is Braggin's Adventures. Hey everybody, Andrew from Braggins Adventures here, and today we're back on the Carnival Miracle to talk about things you can do on a day at sea. Now, I'm not gonna touch base on the obvious, like the pool that you're looking at, because obviously the pool is a pretty cool place to hang out, and obviously you can eat and drink on a day at sea, but I wanna touch base on the actual activities that are offered. Now, these are gonna be pretty uniform across all Carnival ships, so if you're not cruising on the Miracle, but you might be cruising on, say, the Celebration or something, they're going to have most of this stuff. Now, some of the larger, newer ships are going to have additional items like roller coasters and um, ropes courses and things like that. But for the most part, the stuff I'm going to talk about today, you're going to find fleet-wide. The only exception to that rule might be on the fun Italian-style ships, which won't feature some of these things. All right, so... I'm gonna take you uh, place by place. I'm gonna kind of go in alphabetical order, at least as far as how they're organized within my uh, camera roll. Um, and, and so uh, we'll take you there. I'll try to let you know what deck the activity can be found on on the Carnival Miracle specifically. Um, and uh, well, let's start with the A's. We're gonna start at the uh, arcade. Now on this particular ship, it is called the Warehouse Arcade. It's a pretty cool spot. Um, it's a decent size. It's not the biggest arcade on the planet, but they cram a lot of games in there. And if you're an adult that happens to enjoy gaming, you're going to have a good time in here. But this place is great if you're a younger adult or older teenager because the games that they have uh, uh, feature a wide variety um, that's going to entertain any type of gamer. They also have some of the classic games like Ski Ball that you can play, and I'm going to show you some of that coming up here in just a moment. Um, and then they've got some of the, the like win a prize games, the ticket games. Everything's completely digital here, so uh, you're going to collect your tickets and then you go and sort them in a machine and pick your prizes out of the machine and it spits them out. There is no attendant. If you do have a problem with one of the games, there's a phone on the wall, you call and a tenant comes down and corrects whatever the error is, gives you the refund or the tickets you're missing or whatever it is. Um, we found this place not very crowded for most of the time that we were on this ship, which is a shame, though I will say we were on Alaskan cruise, which means that there were less children on the cruise than you might find on, say, a shorter cruise going spring break out of Long Beach, California. Um, so just do keep that in mind. That being said, though, I had fun playing in here, and I think you're going to have a pretty good time, too. Next up, we are going to head uh, to take a peek at arts and crafts that are available on the ship. Now, uh, I'm not going to include trivia in this. We'll get to that later on, but, but actual physical arts and crafts, these are completely free to do. They are limited supply, though. So if you go through your fun times on the Hub app and you see that at 9 a.m. they're going to do arts and crafts in the lobby and you're going to get to make a bracelet or these cards or whatever, get there early so that you can make sure you get your supplies because they will run out. Uh, we had an absolute blast. We had never done arts and crafts on board a carnival ship before. Uh, we actually didn't even realize it was a thing because we tend to just stick with eating, drinking, and then, um, you know, doing some of the more tactile things like the casino, which we're going to get to in just a moment. Uh, that being said, we had an absolute blast. Grab a drink from the bar, enjoy the arts and crafts. Most of these were done either in the lobby on deck two or in the, um, uh, little coffee place, uh, the seating area outside the coffee place. But they're super fun. They list the location and what you're gonna be doing right there in your Hub app. Up next, we're gonna head to Mr. Lucky's Casino. Uh, every ship's gonna have a casino. Some of them are big, some of them are small. I actually think the one on the Miracle is pretty big. Unfortunately, they were a little nitpicky about getting footage inside the casino on this particular cruise. So here's a picture of us playing craps that you can look at while I talk about it. Um, anyway, it's a super fun place to hang out on a day at sea, but on a day at sea, it is super packed. Just keep that in mind. On the Miracle in particular, the smoking section is not particularly separated from the non-smoking section, so just know that if smoke's an issue for you, you're going to want to steer clear of that. Also of note, on the Miracle in particular, they have removed the casino bar. They still offer drink service. There will be people coming around taking drink orders, but there's no bar that you can hang out at in the casino anymore. What did this do? It made room for more games. And uh, honestly, I think the variety of games is great. It's comparable to walking into a casino in Vegas. Um, my son, Aaron, always does well when he plays at sea. So it's kind of up to you. And I do just want to mention really quickly that Carnival does tier match. 
So if you if you gamble a lot in Vegas and you're a, a high level member at one of the casinos or one of the casino chains, for example, I have Pearl status at MGM Properties. Um, there's a website you can go to if you just Google Carnival Casino Tier Match. The page will pop up. It's on the Carnival website, but that's the easiest way to find it is to just use Google. Um, you'll take a photo of the front and back of your card, say what casino it is, what your tier level is, your name, and your VIFP Carnival fund number, and they will match that. And you'll start getting good casino offers from Carnival as well, which could lead to free cruises, and that's a pretty valuable deal. All right, guys, up next, we're going to look at some of the games you can play on board. Now, this is going to happen in various locations around the ship, but they do things like the champagne ring toss up on the Lido deck, which I obviously sucked pretty bad at. Um, but they do have a variety of games that they'll do up on deck, as well as down in the atrium lobby, um, where we got to do uh, uh, a little like uh, board game, a live action board game. And then they do this guess who you are game, which is over by the Java Blue. But the games will vary depending on your cruise uh, ship and sailing. Um, and they kind of will try to cater them uh, sometimes to where you're going, what your destination is. They're all a lot of fun and they're all free to participate in. And you can actually win stuff. Like uh, the champagne ring toss, obviously you're gonna win a bottle of champagne. Um, uh, the, the main prize that they're giving out for winners is the thingy on a stringy right now. They used to do the ship on a stick, but they stopped doing that for some reason. Uh, according to John Hild, it's because they had a problem with their supplier. Uh, but hopefully those ships on a stick will be coming back very, very soon because I do miss those. Uh, the thingy on a stringy though, it's a, it's a little carnival medallion um, on, a, on a lanyard for lack of a better word. Um, so you can win. We won actually quite a few prizes over the course of this 10 day Alaskan cruise. Um, it turns out we're pretty good at playing nerdy games on board ships. Um, this one in particular that you're looking at right now was a lot of fun, uh, where we got to play in teams to try to complete this live board game in the atrium. Um, and, and this team needed someone else. So I joined in and I was playing with this little, uh, girl and we had such a good time. Um, she obviously was able to get a thingy on a stringy at the end of it all. The, the host was very, very kind. Um, cause I was not too great at this particular game, but we certainly had a good time. This was a load of fun. I think this particular game, we were in there probably a half an hour playing this thing. Um, it was a lot of levels, a lot of intricate things, but the host explained it really well. And again, it's free to participate. So why wouldn't you join in? Up next, we're gonna head to the Mad Hatter's Ball. This is uh, located down on deck one. They do a lot of things in here, but specifically what I'm talking about is the comedy shows. Um, that's kind of what it's known for. This is a full-size lounge. It's actually very large, much larger than I thought it was gonna be given the ship's layout. Um, but this is where you're gonna find your nightly comedy shows, both the clean versions and then those lovely R-rated versions. Um, you know what, they're a fun time. This was actually our first time attending one of the comedy shows. And uh, I gotta say, I would absolutely do it again. It's pretty universally the same on every ship. Um, you're gonna get those those early time clean ones and then those later time uh, R-rated ones. Even the R-rated ones though, I, they're not that bad. There is a full bar in here and it is a specialty bar. So there are some cocktails that you can get at this bar that you're not gonna find anywhere else on the ship. During the day and on sea days and stuff, you're gonna find things like the art auctions inside the Mad Hatter's Ball. It's located all the way forward. It's a super cool little spot on the ship. I highly recommend you check it out um, and, and at least go catch one comedy show on your next cruise. All right, guys, it's time to talk about karaoke. Now, this is gonna happen at various locations throughout the ship, but one of our favorite spots on any carnival ship to do it is the Red Frog Pub. Not to be confused with the Red Frog Rum Bar, which is on most ships up on the Lido deck. The Red Frog Pub does not exist on every carnival ship, um, so where you do karaoke might be substituted on your ship. But uh, I just find, generally speaking, that it's a more fun vibe. Now, we did a lot of daytime karaoke on this cruise, uh, and I think it was due to the nature of the fact it was an Alaskan cruise. But we had really good audience in there, really good crowd, and I think between Alyssa and I, we probably did six or seven different songs uh, over the course of the cruise. Um, karaoke is a fun time. Grab a drink or two or six if that's what you need to get up and sing. But uh, I highly recommend it. The, the crowd's usually pretty cool. Um, they're gonna be more encouraging for you and, and you're not gonna feel like, 
uh, you know, maybe embarrassed like you might at like a dive bar on land, if that makes sense. Um, but it's a good time and it being in a location that has a bar, it's really easy between numbers if you're not up for a while to go grab a new drink. Um, there's restrooms usually located super close by, so if you have to go use the restroom, you're not gonna miss out on too much. Uh, one of our favorite things to do on the ship is karaoke. It happens almost daily. Something else that you're gonna find that's gonna be catered to your specific cruise are outdoor activities. Uh, on the Alaska cruise, they do a nature walk almost daily, and it's where you walk around the deck. They highly recommend that you have binoculars with you, and he just points out different birds that are flying around or sea life that you might see. And when you're actually in uh, the inside passage in Alaska, you're gonna get to see more land-based animals as well. Um, if you're not doing an Alaskan cruise and you're on a different cruise, they'll have some kind of activity like this, some kind of a, uh, a naturalist that's going to point things out for you. Um, you know what? It was a super good time. We did we did a couple of them. Uh, it's a lot of exercise. You're walking back and forth up on deck, so make sure that you're dressed appropriately for the weather, for where your ship is, and that you do carry those binoculars with you. We always recommend that you have binoculars anytime you go cruising. It doesn't matter what port you're going to. Binoculars are a wonderful, wonderful thing, and you get a relatively cheap pair on Amazon.com uh, that packs up real easily. Up next, we're gonna look at Dr. Frankenstein's lab. This is the nightclub on board the Miracle. Um, every nightclub on every ship's gonna have a different name. They do different activities in here, but for the most part, it's exactly what it is. It's a nightclub. So you're gonna find uh, this most hopping at nighttime. That being said, if you are on an Alaskan cruise, um, it's a more senior crowd and not a lot of them are, you know, clubbing late at night. So we did find this one gentleman who gave me permission to film him uh, while he was dancing. He was literally the only one down on the dance floor besides the two of us filming him. And he had a couple of friends sitting down that he was like talking to. I couldn't hear what he was saying and I was standing two feet away from him. So I don't know how his friends could hear. But the nightclub also has a specialty bar inside of it and uh, you can get certain cocktails there that you might not be able to find anywhere else on the ship. Um, if you're on a shorter like booze cruise or a spring break cruise or something, this place is gonna be hopping every night. And the nightclub is a super fun place to go on uh, on fancy night, on Elliot night, because you're everyone's dancing and they're in like their cocktail dresses and their and their tuxes or their suits. It's a really good time. Next up, we're gonna take a peek at the Phantom Lounge. This is the ship's main show lounge. Every single carnival ship has one and it's where you're gonna catch all the Broadway style shows as well as all the presentations from the cruise director and those big game shows that Carnival likes to do. Family Feud, uh, uh, Deal or No Deal, that kind of stuff. Uh, bingo is generally uh, gonna be played in this area as well. I gotta tell you guys, the Broadway quality shows on Carnival ships, uh, I, I have yet to see anything as well done. They are so high quality, especially when you consider that these people learned to dance and, and all their choreography and set changes on a moving ship. That is astounding. Now, listen, I both have theatrical backgrounds, so we know what we're doing backstage, but I couldn't imagine having to make that adjustment from land to sea. We were also graced with a backstage tour on this uh, particular cruise, and I will get to that in a future video. Um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna throw it in here, but they were very kind to allow us to do that. I highly recommend that you try to at least squeeze in a minimum of one Broadway show uh, next time you are on a Carnival cruise. If you can, they usually have two or three different ones. Catch one of each. They'll play once or twice a night, and then they'll alternate what nights each show is playing. Also, the daytime shows on, on like those days at sea when you can go and check out a game show or something like that, those are loads of fun as well. The Phantom Lounge is super cool. It's three decks on this ship, so it's huge as you can see. But they do have a bar inside so you can grab a drink and enjoy the show with a beverage in your hand. Up next, we're going to look at the liquor tastings that are finally back. Uh, this was one of my favorite things on a Carnival Cruise back pre-COVID, and then they went away during COVID, and they just recently came back. These are complimentary. You just have to get there in time. So they'll do this one or two times on each cruise. Um, it's up in the fun shops. Their goal, obviously, is to sell you the liqueurs that, they, that you're tasting. This particular one we did was a scotch tasting right up my alley. So as long as you get there early and get a spot, you're going to get in on the scotch tasting. Um, it, again, absolutely free. They'll do between three and five pours, and they're pretty decent pours. He's doing three quarters of an ounce to an ounce pour. If you particularly liked one and you're smiley and nice and polite, they'll usually pour you a little extra if you ask nicely. And you know what? I'm a big fan of the liquor store in the fun shops. I think they offer some really good deals. We have another video on the channel that compares if it's better 
better to just buy your liquor at Costco or if these duty-free shops on board the cruise line are really of value. Please go check that out. I will link to it at the end of this video, um, but, but it, there's some valuable information there. If you're not gonna buy it though, let's not talk about shopping right now, go drink some free alcohol. Even if you have the Cheers package, this doesn't count towards your limit. Um, and if you don't have the Cheers package, this is a great way to get a free little buzz going before you might go in to see the show in the Phantom Lounge that we just talked about. These usually are gonna happen around seven o'clock at night. Occasionally they will happen earlier though, and that could mess up your dinner plans. So just make sure you check the Hub app, look at the fun times in the Hub app, Figure out when you want to do that liquor tasting versus when you want to eat that early dinner or that late dinner versus what shows you want to see and try to arrange your schedule accordingly. Again, they only are going to do this liquor tasting once or twice per cruise, depending on the length. Something else super cool on this ship was the silent disco. Now, oftentimes your ship will have this in the nightclub that we were talking about, but on this ship, it was actually up on deck. If you've never done a silent disco before, uh, this was uh, my second time doing it. We did one at Knott's Berry Farm Resort. So much fun. If you don't know what it is, everybody gets their own set of headphones and there's two different channels, uh, sometimes five different channels. So you can listen to whatever channel you want to. Maybe you like 90s music, maybe you like 80s music, country music, whatever it is. And you're dancing, you're having a good time and everyone else is dancing around you, but no one can hear anything except what's playing in your headphones. So you might be dancing to one style of music while the person standing right next to you is dancing to a different style of music. Now for this particular one, it wasn't just channels. We actually had two live DJs playing what we were hearing. So they did some contests as well, loads of fun. Obviously every carnival ship has a sports deck, somewhere you can go play uh, a variety of outdoor sports. Now some of them are fairly tiny and might only have that mini golf course but some of them have this half court basketball court, which was a load of fun. I do want to let you know though, you're not allowed to take any food or beverage in the basketball court and you have to have appropriate closed toed shoes and sportswear on. Um, we were allowed to go in just to take these couple of shots and obviously I suck at basketball. Um, but then he was like, hey, you guys got to get out of here because we had on flip flops. Um, uh, mini golf, you can wear whatever you want, carry your drink with you. Although I will tell you on the mini golf courses on every ship I've been on, there's not really a good place to set your drink. So you're often bending over, setting it on the ground, hitting your, your, taking your swing and then picking it up. Some of the larger newer ships also have ropes courses or um, the sky ride, which is the bicycle over the sea thing. Up next is tea time. This is one of my favorite things on any carnival ship and it happens on every single one of them. Usually on the sea day, if your cruise has more than one sea day, they may do it two or three times. Times. Uh, it's complimentary. It's tea and finger sandwiches. It's at 3 p.m. Um, and it's just a good English style uh, tea time. Absolutely free. It's located in the main dining room. Check your fun times on the Hub app so that you can know and plan your day accordingly. But the teas are delicious. You can upgrade your teas. The free teas are like basic Lipton black tea and you can upgrade to better flavors. But the sandwiches are all complimentary as well and it's a really good time. I highly, highly recommend hitting up tea time. Uh, I promised you we'd talk about trivia coming up, so here it is. We did pretty much every trivia I think we could do on this cruise. They have a variety of trivias, and there's bound to be one that's going to fit your knowledge base. Uh, we love Friends trivia because I know a lot about Friends. Harry Potter trivia might be fun for you, or musical trivia. It's a good time, and it's complimentary, and it happens a lot. Of course, there's always duck hiding that you can do. We happen to hide 35 ducks on this cruise and you could do the same on yours. It's a great way to interact with people after the cruise ship because you can leave your email address or something and they can write you afterwards. All right, one thing before I let you go, you know those towel animals I showed you at the very beginning of the video? You can take a free class on board the ship and learn how to make those animals. It was super fun and really crowded. It took place in the Phantom Lounge. I would say that whole first floor was pretty much full with people doing it. The only downfall to it is that you don't get to keep them. <laughs> On your way out, you have to put all the towels and the shapes that you made into a bin. But it was a really good time. I absolutely had a blast doing it. We got there early and got front row seats so that we were up close and personal with the uh, staff that were showing us how to do this. All right, guys. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this view at the um, things you can do on a day at sea or at night on board the Carnival Miracle or really any Carnival ship. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next adventure. Bye.
Hey everybody, Andrew from Braggins Adventures and I wanted to take a quick moment to remind you to make sure you click subscribe and ring that notification bell. Why? Because we're giving out a $50 gift card to one lucky subscriber for Amazon.com. Now, to make this contest happen, we have to hit 400 subscribers by January 5th. So make sure you tell your friends to come on over and click that subscribe button.